Hello, uh, I'm going to show you how my AWS uh, Internet architecture works. So basically, I was trying to build the architecture as accurate as possible as per with the CA instruction and also the diagram that I made, the uh, solution architecture diagram. However, Due to the fact that it's AWS Educate, I had lots of difficulties, I had lots of limitation uh, while I was trying to create the architecture. So I couldn't really create the architecture as uh, as I really wanted as per the CA instruction. However, I tried my best. So I'm going to show you my uh, instances. So here are all the instances, the web server, app server, and also the DB server. So uh, I'm going to show you my uh, VPC. So basically, I have here a couple of VPC. So that's the default VPC and one Inomet VPC. That's the production VPC and Inomet VPC. That's the uh, test VPC. One I have uh, this test and test develop VPC and normal the production VPC. And then I can also show you my root tables. There are my root tables with uh, private and the public subnet assigned there. I'll show you the uh, routes there, all the rules. And um, here are the routes. And then I'll show you my subnets here. There are all my subnets. And then I have the security groups. So here are all my security groups. For example, I have this Inomet security groups and I can show you the rules that like how I'm planning to accept the rules and uh, do the uh, the port, how, how it would work. And then uh, over here, I guess, I've shown you pretty much everything. And for the NAT gateways, I wasn't able to create the NAT gateways. Uh, I used NAT instead instead because uh, the AWS, it, it doesn't allow the uh, creating NAT gateway. So I had to use the NAT instances. I have taken a screenshot actually to show the, yeah, so I couldn't create the NAT instance. So that's the uh, screenshot that I took um, right. So now I will show you um, my RDS. So I have created the uh, database. I have the database here. So that's the DB instance for, uh, I use my SQL because the reason is for SQL, uh, st uh, the uh, Microsoft SQL server, it had some limitation in AWS. I couldn't really create that like it had some problem with the uh, Windows authentication in AWS and within the free trial uh, tire it wasn't actually allowing me to do that right uh, let's go back to our instance easy to instances so here are the instances that I have at the moment yes so at the beginning as I explained the fact that I couldn't really do I couldn't really build a infrastructure as I really wanted to build as per the C instruction. So I did build here the app server, the web server, and also the DB server. So for example, here I could build here with the X2T large as per the C instruction, here X2T X large. But however, when I wanted to build the normal normal large not even the micro one the normal large i couldn't do that again i had some limitation uh, for this aws educate so for for those server that i built i couldn't really deploy the app that we created for our other class so what i did i actually followed the way that uh, you showed us on our last class like copying an AMI image from the cloud nine and then deploy the app over there and use the load balancer. One thing very important, I was actually able to do that, but I was able to make the load balancer working, 
with the uh, Linux AMI, the Amazon Linux AMI, but I wasn't able to do that for those uh, instances that I created. I wasn't able to do that. Uh, the AWS Educate only allowed me to do it for this Amazon Linux AMI that I created uh, for, for, for the Cloud9 and for my other class. So what I will do, I'll now show you the app development in the Amazon uh, Linux AMI uh, that I created through the Cloud9 AMI image. So I'll go to that AMI here. I'll, I'll, here are the two AMI image. And now I'll show you how the load balancer works. So I will start the Inomid2 server. Uh, I'll actually, I'll start uh, both of them. So I will start. And now uh, let's wait for uh, them to get started. Then I will SSH uh, them uh, from my terminal and uh, show how the load balancer works. So let's go to my load balancer first while it's starting. So instances, at the moment it's out of service. So let's keep my, uh, sorry, let's keep my terminal ready. So I don't have the updated uh, public IP for address. So let's wait for those instances to start. When they will start, when they will show uh, the public IP for address, I'll paste it here and I'll SSH them. So let's go back to our instances. Right. So the DP instance, actually it's initializing. So let's see. Okay. So it has given me the public IP for address. I'll copy it, I'll go back to my terminal, I will paste it, and I'll try to go inside of those machine, and let's see how does it, okay, we are in. So, I go to environment, environment and I go to Inomed, right. So we are in the Inomed now, I will run the server in port 2001. And yeah, I'll run the server in port 2000, sorry, port 2003, as per, I actually, I mentioned this, I, I configured my security group in a way so that it takes the, it takes the incoming request from port 2003, and then it runs it from there. So I'll run it now. Okay, and let's go back to our load balancer. So load balancer will ping in every 10 seconds to see if the uh, if if the zone is healthy if it is healthy or not so it will come back in every 10 seconds to see if it's healthy or not as you can see i i got already ping already a couple of pings there already three pings there from load balancer to see whether it's healthy or not so you see it is it is again getting ping from load balancer so which shows that the the instance or the server is actually healthy. So technically, it shows that the load balancer is working and it is receiving the ping. So I'll refresh. It is still up. okay. So you see, it is uh, one of them is load balancer is working and it shows now in service. So it was out of service before, but now it shows in of, uh, in service because it's receiving the ping. So the load balancer is actually working. And again, unfortunately, I couldn't make the auto scaling working with that. I have some screenshot I will show here. So uh, I couldn't uh, I couldn't create the launch configuration and I couldn't also create the uh, auto scaling group because it says that my email address I am not authorized to uh, create the auto scaling group. Right. So I will now uh, <coughs> show you the app deployment. So I have the uh, public IP address copied in my clipboard. 
I will test them. And since I was running them from port 3003, run port 3003, and yes, it is working from port 3003. See, its user is running. And um, let's uh, add a username. Let's try it with uh, my username, and let's see if that works. It is working. It is working beautifully. The website works. The uh, patient works. The homepage, uh, chat online, and the uh, and every, everything seems to be working here uh, beautifully without any issue. Actually, before making this video, I tested this uh, thoroughly and I didn't find any uh, problem. So yeah, it is it is actually working without any problem. And there is actually whatsoever no issue with this uh, app deployment, except the fact that I had some limitation uh, with AWS Educate. So, so far, uh, I've, I have uh, shown you my VPC, my subnets, uh, my EC2 instances, and the app deployment. And also, I also explained the fact that I couldn't create the uh, uh, I couldn't create the auto scaling and for so, and so many other thing. Uh, because of this uh, AWS Educate uh, limitation, so I'll be so I'll be grateful if you can leave me some feedback uh, in our Moodle page, uh, so that I can uh, improve uh, this this uh, cloud uh, skills in my uh, future work life. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day. Thanks. Bye bye.